Again, welcome everyone. We're gonna be starting here in just a few more minutes. And in the meantime, uh, please take uh, a few minutes to sign up on learn.omicslogic.com. We're gonna be going through this site uh, today in our session. And we're going to begin in just a few more minutes. We're gonna let everyone join. So please be patient. All right, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to this session. Today we're going to talk about these upcoming programs for the 2022 fall virtual training that we are offering together with the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. And we're going to be talking about the details of the programs, uh, what is going to be covered in each one of them, and how you can benefit from joining, participating, and completing these programs in your biomedical research projects, or just if you're trying to get started with bioinformatics. So before we begin, I would like to ask Emmanuel um, if she could briefly talk about the registration process for those at OSULVRN, um, and then I'll take over from there. So good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Emmanuel uh, Ruiz, and I'm going to be the link between LBRN and Omiclogic. And so to help you with registration and any question. So um, for all of you that uh, are still haven't registered, um, I would appreciate that if you can do it with the form that I'm putting on the chat right now, it's a red cap form. It's a way for us to gather all the persons that um, will uh, uh, so follow the different courses and that we can um, has LBRN is a NIH funded uh, program that we can um, uh, just show to the NIH the work that we are doing and for the, um, the accounting uh, perspective. So uh, we appreciate that you can um, so uh, fill this form, please in a way to uh, confirm your affiliation with all the LBRN campuses, I need that you uh, um, give your institutional email and not your personal email. I will appreciate that. And you can um, have to choose one course that you want to follow. Uh, yeah, that will be uh, important. And um, you can after follow the all the, um, the steps that uh, Mr. Broski will, Elia will um, show you to go to Omiclogic and follow the courses. But this first step is important for the administrative part of this program. Thank you very much. All right, great. Thank you very much, Emmanuel. And again, welcome everyone. I will also paste in the chat some information about each one of the programs with a link and this link, as you will notice, is on the Omics Logic portal. So hopefully you have had the chance to sign up and create an account. But let's first start with this brief overview. We're gonna have three different programs. Uh, they're gonna start either this week or the next week. Um, if you're not sure which one, I hope to answer all of the questions that you might have today. Uh, we're going to be looking at what topics are gonna be covered, how the programs are organized, what kind of resources you have. And hopefully as you have your questions, you can actually post them in the chat and uh, I will try to get to them towards the end of the session. So first of all, what is Omics Logic? Uh, how are we connected to the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network? And how are we working with the National Association of Idea Principal Investigators uh, that brings together 23 states and Puerto Rico? 
Pine Biotech, the company behind Omics Logic, has been working with the Tower Bioinformatics Research Center uh, for a number of years to develop easy to use bioinformatics and data science tools for anyone that is interested in biomedical research and wants to get started to use biomedical research, uh, bioinformatics or data science to get started. And so as a result, we have been working with the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network for three years now, as well as with other universities around the country and internationally as well. And we've had over 20,000 students complete this training uh, with uh, success at the undergraduate, graduate, or even postgraduate levels. Now, in this year, in 2022, uh, we started working with the National Association of Idea Principal Investigators, and we've had uh, two pilot programs for faculty and students. Uh, here's just a few of them that have recently completed uh, the training that we had over the summer. And the training over the summer was uh, specifically designed to help uh, introduce some of the topics like data science, genomics, metagenomics, and bioinformatics for infectious diseases. And uh, I hope that today we're going to go through these new programs that we're going to have um, in the next few months uh, to build upon some of the um, success of these previous pilots. What is Omics Logic? Omics Logic is a collection is a collection of sorry, six basic topics that were requested. Uh, okay, um, can you hear me fine, Emmanuel? Yeah. Okay, somebody mentioned that you could not hear me. I can hear you, yes, no problem. Um, sorry, so um, we are going, we uh, cover six basic topics. And these topics include the introduction and overview of bioinformatics and their application to different types of omics data, specific training on genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, epigenomics, and an overview of data science. And this is the base curriculum uh, that we coordinated with researchers and the directors of the bioinformatics core at the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. Um, and so made those available both as a synchronous and uh, synchronous training uh, through the Omics Logic portal. Now, in addition to that, uh, we want to make sure that bioinformatics and data science are consumed in the context of specialization tracks that we have um, in oncology, infectious diseases, neuroscience, and agriculture. And so, as you will see, uh, these uh, practical skills and uh, topics are supplemented by projects or case studies specific to these different um, areas of research. One of the priorities that we had from the beginning was to make sure that anyone with or without coding skills and engineering or technical background can participate. And so a major part of this coursework is the logic behind these different types of analysis that are expanded upon by coding exercises in R and Python. So as we get started, we're going to start from the logic of the analysis. Why are we doing what we're doing? What are the basic steps? And then if you are interested to learn more in terms of coding, each step can also be replicated in one of those languages. And the uh, curriculum then goes on to expand upon those technical skills with application to different research studies that are based on publications and publicly available data sets. So as we begin, uh, let's make sure that everyone is registered. Uh, here, again, I will paste the link. It is learn.onyxlogic.com. And let me um, close my presentation so we can go through this together. So on this portal, um, I'm already signed in, so I'm going to log out. Um, when you click on login, you will see that you can create an account right here. 
Um, and you can use one of your social media accounts, but we would ask that you use your institutional email address uh, so that we can have a record and an association with the program that you are from. So what I will do is I will log in and please do this alongside with me so that we can go on to the other pages, right? Um, which will require that login information. Once you log in, you will see this. Th these are just general resources that you can search through. Uh, but what's important is you will see right here, your profile. So here will be your email address. Mine is Ilya at pine.bio. And here you will see your profile. So you can click right here and you will find that this is your personal profile. So what's important at the beginning of this program is to complete this program. So you can see right here, I have my profile completion to 100%. So that's kind of what we um, ask that you do. Uh, of course, having your full name properly spelled, uh, having your social media or your org ID account connected and having some description. So here you can actually add information about your current research, um, maybe what you're interested in um, or what program you're from. And you can edit that information by clicking on this profile button. Okay, so I will give it just a few minutes. If you could let me know in the chat that you have completed your profile. So I know to continue. All right, thank you, Diane. Jenna, thank you. All right, perfect. Thank you, everyone. So um, let's go on then. Um, after we sign up, uh, as I mentioned, you will complete your profile and that's where you will start seeing uh, some important information about your progress. So in fact, this is how we are going to be able to track um, that you are completing the necessary steps um, that are included in the program. All right, thank you, Michael. So um, what you will find is that there are several tabs under your profile. Uh, the first tab is activity. Uh, the second one is courses, programs, and then certificates. So what I will be talking today about is programs that you can choose between. And then within each program, courses are going to be assigned to that program. And as a result of completing the necessary coursework, and attending some of the sessions that we have planned, you will obtain a certificate for each one of the courses that are included, as well as for the full program. So at the end, you will have a certificate of completion, again, for each individual course. And after you complete all of the steps of the programs that you are in and that um, with the necessary um, participation and activities, you will get the overall certificate of completion as well. Um, as you navigate the portal, you will find that it is organized according to different um, kind of ways to navigate this site. And so some people find this a little bit confusing, but that's just because there's quite a number of options here. So the first option is just to search for a particular topic. So if you go to the very top of the menu, you will find that there are courses, you click there and you will have some recommended courses if you're just getting started. Um, or you can search for a topic like cancer or uh, maybe SARS-CoV-2 or something like that. In addition to that, there are going to be tags on this top right corner where you can find them organized by whether it's a project, which is like a case study based on a publication, a specific type uh, of a topic like transcriptomics, uh, or maybe a coding language like R or Python. Down at the bottom, you will also see some predefined 
collections of courses that are organized by these major topics that we cover on this portal. What I will start with is a collection called Getting Started. And this collection is useful for anyone who's just getting started with bioinformatics and would like to understand the terminology and kind of key concepts that are important to know um, as you're starting to uh, use bioinformatics in your research. So um, as you go along, you will see that there is a point system uh, that is based on different activities on the portal. So in fact, let me quickly show you, we can go back to the portal. Um, and instead of courses here at the end, I'm going to go to achievements. And here we can see that all of you, for example, have signed up and you got 50 points for signing up. Um, and then you can see some other people that signed up before you um, and, and what happens as you achieve different milestones, uh, complete a course, maybe complete an exercise, uh, things like that. So as I mentioned, after we go through the basic topics, uh, you're then introduced to project examples. And these project examples are case studies that are designed to illustrate how the different methods of analysis are applied in research studies and are broken down by several different steps. Um, as you go through the different topics that we will go over in the programs, you're welcome to modify and kind of uh, choose and pick some projects or case studies that are more relevant to your research interests. Um, the overall programs are designed to combine live sessions like we're having today with self-guided materials, which we just saw on the portal, and practical assignments that could either be no-code assignments on the TBioInfo platform, which, will, which I will demonstrate in a few minutes, or assignments in coding using R or Python on the platform with predefined answers. So, um, Let's talk a little bit about the program resources. Um, so as I mentioned, one of the um, kind of ways that we have designed these programs is to offer you a flexible schedule. So you can participate in these live sessions that are scheduled, or some of them will be asynchronous, meaning that you will be provided with a recorded version uh, that you can watch at your own uh, time. Uh, or if you do join a live session, these sessions are going to allow you to ask questions, um, you know, work with the mentor to um, overcome some technical challenges. Um, and the important thing would be to really uh, follow the structure of these different programs uh, that um, we have explained on each one of the program pages. So um, in the chat, I shared some of those links. Again, I'm going to put that again in here. There are three major programs. The first one is Introduction to Bioinformatics. So Introduction to Bioinformatics is designed to give you a high level overview um, of genomic, transcriptomic, and metagenomic data analysis. Uh, you can see that it starts tomorrow. Um, and as you scroll through, you will also see the schedule and what topics are being covered in that particular program. Uh, you will also find links under each session for the specific resource that is associated with that lecture. And you can complete those resources on your own. Now, here below, you will find some information about pricing, Again, those of you that are a part of the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network, uh, you have to sign up through the link that Emmanuel provided. Um, and that way, you, if you qualify, your fees are going to be covered by the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. For those of you that are not from LBRN or LSU, the vet school, uh, there are some discounts available um, through the National Association of Idea Principal Investigators. Uh, starting with 70% uh, off uh, for um, qualifying institutions. 
Now at the bottom of this page, you will also find a list of associated resources. And so for the um, overview, um, let's just go to this course, Bytes and Molecules. So the Bytes and Molecules course is designed to introduce the very basics that you have to know to be able to start with the more advanced courses and provides a good overview of key topics that we think are important for anyone who's starting to work with omics data. And that includes um, general concepts about genes, um, you know, the genome, uh, the code of life and how it's organized in the DNA, RNA and protein, um, and then a brief introduction to each one of these topics like genomics, transcriptomics and metagenomics, including if you click here on load more, some applications of bioinformatics in precision medicine, even space omics, and an introduction to coding. So introduction to bioinformatics languages like R. In addition to that, if we go back to the program page, you can find at the very bottom that the expectation is to complete 10 sessions. And once you complete those sessions and associated resources, you will automatically see your certificate appear right here on the side with your name. So as I mentioned, for each one of these programs, you will be um, granted access to a number of different resources. So first of all, uh, you will notice that in the portal after you've just signed up, you have a basic account. And once you sign up into one of the programs, you will be given access to a more advanced subscription that gives you access to all of the premium coursework that you will need to complete the program, as well as to the TBioInfo platform. So let me show you what this platform is, and I'll briefly explain how we're going to use it in the program itself. So you're also welcome to take a look. I'm gonna paste the link in the chat. So um, the way that we're gonna be using this platform is by um, trying out some of the analysis methods and making sure that the analysis um, logic is well explained and understood. So let's take a look here at this example with bulk RNA-seq. For bulk RNA-seq, and in the program itself, you will have some exercises that you can do independently or in the class and learn about each step of data processing, analysis, and visualization without uploading any data sets, simply by following some steps that are predefined on the portal. Uh, you will be guided to take the next step. And after you complete the pipeline, some outputs that are explored either on your computer, so downloadable tables, um, or visual outputs are going to be provided as well. In addition to that, you will have some interactive dashboards that you can use to explore the data that is produced by that pipeline. So here, for example, we have some differential expression uh, and, and we can find what are the differentially expressed genes, um, see a heat map um, of some differentially expressed genes, or even find some specific genes that we might be interested in and understand how does the expression of that gene vary across different samples that we had in the demo pipeline. So once um, we kind of um, understand the logic of this analysis, the next step would be to understand how can we reproduce some of this analysis on our own. And for that, we're going to be working with tables. So you can see that the data sets are going to be provided right here. Um, and you can download the data for each type of analysis that we're going to be working. And again, as I mentioned, for the introduction to bioinformatics program, it's going to be focused on genomics, transcriptomics, metagenomics, um, and a brief introduction to coding or getting started with coding in R and Python. The second program 
is called Data Science for Biomedical Research. So again, all of these links are in the chat, so you can explore this together with me. And this program is more focused on data visualization, statistical analysis, and machine learning in R and Python. Each one of the programs comes with a short video that gives you an overview of the topics that are being covered, or you can explore these topics down below on the schedule page and find some associated resources that are covered in that particular session. As I mentioned, the pricing is going to stay the same. And then down below, you will find some additional um, uh, kind of expanded coursework um, specific to data science. So how to uh, load your data, wrangle your data, and how to get started with uh, statistical analysis as well as um, machine learning. So let's take a look at an example. So I'm going to go to this course and I'll just paste the link in the chat as well. And let's take a look at this first lesson on how to load data and get started in R. So um, I'm hoping that most of you are familiar with what R is. Um, R is a language that is often used in bioinformatics and there are many useful packages uh, for data visualization. And so what we'll do here is we'll first go over the uh, syntax of the code. So we'll understand how um, code is organized. And then once we understand how it is organized, we can also try to run one of these exercises on our own to understand how it works. So I'm going to go to this section called try it yourself. So what happens here is each one of these code blocks could be run. And then you can see that there are some instructions that I have to follow for this code to actually work. And right here, I will have some outputs that can give me an idea of what I'm doing wrong and how I can fix this code. And you can see that the instructions are to import and view a text file. So I can use the text file link. Replace this right here. run it and find another problem. Okay, and you can see that again, I have a problem. And so to understand what I should do, I can go back and I can see how this code is actually organized and what I should do to be able to fix the error. So let's go back. Okay, read table. True is not found. and success. So what these exercises teach us is that it's very important to follow directions, understand what the code does, be able to read the code, identify mistakes, and then when we are successful at reproducing what the exercise is expecting from us, we're going to get points. So what I can do now is go to the next one and again see what I need to change here based on the previous assignment and try to fix all of them up until I get to more and more advanced uh, types of assignments, like writing functions uh, and, and performing more and more complex um, analyses that are going to be very useful if you're gonna be working with omics data. So again, you can see some of the examples um, down below. So these are some of the things that we're gonna be doing in this uh, course. Of course, we're also going to be working with Python. Um, in Python, you will also get challenges that you can save eventually as a uh, project of your own using Jupyter Notebooks, add them to your GitHub profile, 
and start developing a portfolio uh, of uh, kind of coding exercises that you have completed and maybe even turn them into projects. The final uh, program that I want to briefly discuss today is called Bioinformatics and Biomedical Research. So the way this program is different from the previous two is that it is really more focused on solving real challenges with data analysis in application to real projects. So instead of focusing on kind of skill development, we're going to go through several case studies where you will be able to appreciate how different approaches in data processing, data analysis, data visualization, machine learning, and statistical analysis could be very useful um, to study these topics in precision medicine or biomedical research. So what the goal of this program is, again, to give you some overview of the basic methods and then introduce you to some of these case studies where these methods are used and compare how we can perform similar analysis uh, using data from the public domain. And so there is going to be a lesson that is going to be dedicated to finding um, and using some of these public uh, domain repositories where the data could be uh, used to generate a hypothesis, uh, practice and replicate similar results to what the authors found, uh, but importantly, to connect the insights uh, from data analysis with our ability to interpret them uh, for biomedical research purposes. So the way that these programs are organized is by level. Uh, you can see that uh, we kind of have a beginner level and that beginner level is the introduction to bioinformatics. We have an intermediate level, which is skill oriented. And this is specifically for those who want to either get started with coding or would like to improve their coding skills. And then finally, we have a more research oriented program that is going to provide less um, technical kind of training and more focused on how to integrate uh, the understanding of biology with these um, insights from the data analysis process. So at this moment, I want to pause and just ask um, if anyone has any questions about these programs. about these programs, about how to sign up, um, about what maybe a program is the right one for you, um, or about anything else that we've covered so far. Tell me about the pricing a little bit clearer. Um, so the introduction to bioinformatics, let's say I want to select that one. Is the pricing uh, 150, 300, 450 for, for that one program, or does that cover all three if you if you do the 90 days? I, I, I don't really understand the pricing is for each of these three or for all three. Yeah, so, um, and Diane, where, uh, which university are you from? Boise State, we're an idea state, so through NAPI. Okay. Yeah, so so then, you know, don't sign up for it right now. If you're from one of those programs, um, you just have to fill out the form and say that you're interested in oh. that program. And then someone will send you a registration link with a discount. So your pricing is going to be like 70% off. And so um, could now, I start tomorrow, even though I haven't ha got that pricing yet? Yes, yes. Tomorrow. Okay. So the, uh, the first session in each one of these programs is free for anyone. Anyone can join to just kind of understand how it works. Um, and then, you know, once you say, yes, this is what I want to do, then we'll send you that discount link. Now, I do want to mention about one versus two versus three programs. Uh, what we found is that people who sign up for three typically don't complete any of them. Um, and one of our objectives here is to help, um, you know, people, participants to complete at least one. Um, that's a metric that helps us demonstrate that these programs could be completed, that we should continue to improve them and work with these universities to kind of establish a common format um, for them to participate. So I would recommend choosing one. Um, if you don't know which one is best for you, you know, maybe joining the first session in each one 
could be a good strategy to kind of understand how they differ. Um, and then, you know, make making a choice about it, just one. And so if I do the first one and decide to do the second one, will it start like a week after or immediately after or next semester or something? Will they go in order once I start or are they broken up by some other way? Yeah, they're going to be on different days. Oh, okay. um, they're all going to be starting in October and lasting until the end of December. Um, again, um, sorry, just one second. Um, sorry about that. Yeah. So what I was saying is that, um, you know, you, um, uh, the, the different days are going to be, uh, for different programs. Uh, and then, you know, if you, um, not all of these sessions are going to be live, so it's not like it's going to last, you know, all of these months. Uh, so if you complete one and then you decide you want to switch to another one, it will be just a different day during the week where that session would be and different set of resources that you will have access to. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Matthew, um, basically, if you don't know if you qualify, if you are from any of the institutions that are in the NEPI network, uh, you most likely qualify. If you submitted a form, we're gonna review the form submissions uh, by uh, next week when all of these first sessions are going to be over and we're going to get back to you. And um, Rajesh, if you're trying to choose introduction to bioinformatics and you don't see an option to choose, um, basically I think following the links that I shared, um, you, you know, are you able to access those links? Those links are, um, after you sign up, you should be able to see them. Okay, um, so um, the form was sent out by email. And Matthew, could I just ask you which university you're from? I'm from Delaware State University. Okay, yeah, so you do qualify. Um, if you signed up with your Delaware State email address, uh, then did. you should be getting an email um, in the next few days about completing that registration. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. All right, so great questions. Again, Rajesh, uh, if you want to, um, also, if you have any additional questions after this session, you can always email me, um, Elia at pine.bio. Uh, that's for people that are not from LSU and LBRN. If you are from LSU or LBRN, I suggest contacting Emmanuel. Um, Emmanuel, maybe you could share your email address there as well. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, so um, yes, ULM uh, is a part of the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. So please do um, reach out to Emmanuel if you haven't already filled out the form, which we also shared in the beginning. Maybe we could share that again. So this form is for anyone who's from the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. Um, and what you should do is you should fill out the form and then follow instructions. Maybe Emmanuel, you could repeat what the instructions are for those who are from Louisiana. Yeah, so uh, from the people from Louisiana, uh, so if you still haven't done it, uh, so you can fill the form on red cap. 
Um, so we just ask that you put your name, email address, particularly your institutional email. It is important because uh, it's in this way that we confirm your affiliation to the different campuses that belong to LBRN. And uh, after you just have to um, put which program you would like to follow and uh, that it we don't have much, we don't ask a lot of information. All right, perfect. So again, filling out the form is kind of the, the next step. Um, I saw another question um, uh, for, about discount. So yes, if you are a part of LBRN, uh, the programs are going to be free for you. Um, and then uh, that will be through your institution, but as a part of LBRN. Okay. So um, hopefully we were able to answer a lot of the questions um, in today's session. We had a much more um, in-depth uh, review of the program topics in our previous session. And we're going to follow up with a video recording of that um, overview. Uh, the deadline for completing uh, the program, uh, Matthew, is December 31st. Um, and the deadline for registration is by the end of next week. So we will have a free session. Anyone can join tomorrow. So we'll have a free session on Friday. So these are, again, going to be according to the different programs. And then next week on the 26th. Um, uh, yes, uh, Ashik, you have a question? Yes, I have a question uh -huh. actually. Uh, yes. During the uh, registration in RedCap, uh, while I am giving my email address of uh, my ULM, ULM address, it's saying that email must be an institutional email address to be accepted. Yeah. But I don't know why I am putting my institutional email address in full, but it's showing me this. It's not accepted. I think, I think you know why ULM has two um, types of email addresses, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. For example, um, Ashkan, I think you already have uh, registered. So you it, it, maybe if it's not accepted, it's because you already have done it. So you are already on our files. Okay. Okay. I think so. I think it's that. Uh, it's the same for for rushes rushes I, I hope I, I say it well uh yeah you cannot you already have registered so if you give your same email address as a, your institutional email you already have on this file so uh it, it don't in a, in a, sorry it's not gonna accept it one more one more time okay, okay so you don't need to register so how how can I access uh, to my account then can I please say it again to your account? Yes, Which I mean, uh, how can I, how can I, uh, as I think I registered it from, uh, in the last uh, summer and I didn't able to complete full of the training, but I want to complete it now. So can you please tell me how can I uh, access this, uh, the training module? Yeah, I think what will happen is, you know, as Emmanuel said, your registration on RedCap is complete and now, once that list is approved, uh, so I think Dr. Kasulis will have to approve the list. And then once those names are approved, you will receive an email um, on getting into the sessions. And, uh, you know, that's how you know that you've been accepted and you will be able to complete these programs. Okay, thank you. All right, great. So again, hopefully, um, and, and for Matthew, I posted in the chat. So we will be emailing, again, there's kind of a registration process where we validate that you're from the right institution uh, that falls under the correct category. And then um, once that is approved, we'll be able to send you all of the information. But regardless of the information about all of the sessions, you will receive an invitation for the sessions in the next few days uh, to join the first orientation session about each one of these programs, Introduction to Bioinformatics, Data Science, and Bioinformatics for Biomedical Research. 
Um, you can attend all of them uh, just to kind of understand the differences between the programs. Or if you already know which one that you want to participate in, uh, just give us another um, day or two uh, to finalize that process. Uh, for those of you that are from NEPI, there will be a payment um, still that could either be covered by you personally or by your institution. Again, those um, PIs in your uh, organization, uh, you will be able to reach out to them because this is a network-based uh, um, kind of a program. Uh, so I, I'm sure that you know they, they can help you with that. So um, I don't know if there are any other questions about the program topics, um, kind of the outcomes, the, the schedule, or any of the registration questions. All right. Well, if there are no questions, once again, I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you might have, um, just generic questions about um, you know, what we're doing um, or how to access a particular session or topic. And then Emmanuel um, could help with um, other things as well. Uh, Tianyi Zhang. Um, says that she was not able to sign up to the website with the LSU email address, uh, but requested a course in the form and used an LSU email address. Um, so Tianyi Zhang, are you from LSU? And which email address did you use? Maybe you could paste it in the chat so that we know um, which account that is. And thank you, everyone. Um, if, if you don't have any other questions, um, you're welcome to leave. Uh, thank you for joining today. OK. Uh, so Tiani Zhang uh, used a Cornell email address. I'm assuming that you're saying that you signed up on the portal with your Cornell address, but you are actually at LSU. Yes, and you are Yes, okay, perfect. So, um, Emmanuel, do you have um, Tiani Zhang in your form? Do you know? Um, Zhang? Uh, Tiani Zhang. Ti Zheng Tan. Ti Zheng Tan. Ti Don't send so. Um, so, did, did, were you ah, able to Tiani, out? see, 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 I have him. See, see, I oh, have, okay. uh, I have, I have him. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, if your email address, um, unfortunately, um, if you could re-sign up with your LSU email address, um, that way you will be able to get the um, LBRN account. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions? Yes, I do have. Uh, but it was same like Asik mentioned earlier that uh, uh, I'm having trouble with registering with uh, uh, this red cap. So that means we registered earlier. So the, so this time we are not going to register again for the red cap. So the earlier application uh, will be noted as a present one, or how does it go? I mean, Emmanuel, do you have Rajesh Yadav? In I have it. Uh, yeah, I have. I have him. I have three. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put that on. A... <coughs> uh, I I have um. I have you. You uh, you were a registrar for the um, introduction to bioinformatics. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. So but, is it? Uh, however, I don't have Ashik. I don't find him. Oh, okay, huh? Ashik will send his uh, email ID uh, to you. Ashik, send your email ID. Yeah, he sent you already, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I but uh, it, it's been, uh, um, I haven't received his registration. So did you try already, uh, Ashik, to uh, register? Did you try to, to register? 
sorry i tried to cuz i haven't we didn't work. Okay, I will. Uh, I will ask him to do. If not, then he will. He will. He will email you. Perfect. I have. I have keep his email on my file. So if I don't receive anything, I will contact it again to be sure that he's registered. Yeah. yeah. I will yeah. do it. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. And again, if you have any other questions about registration for LBRN, please um, make sure that you resolve that in the next, you know, week or so. Uh, with Emmanuel, um, you have her email address there as mm -hmm. well. Okay, so again, thank you everyone for joining today. Um, we're going to just uh, wrap it up here in the next few minutes. So if you do have any final questions, we're happy to answer those. All right, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Emmanuel, for joining Thank today. you to you. Thank you, everyone. And hope to see you in the next few sessions. Thank you.